Zeb. Yes. There was a major upset this weekend in Brooklyn where uh, Adam Kalnacki gets dropped by uh, Robert Hellenius. What do you think of that upset, and how does this affect the heavyweight division? Um, I didn't see the fight. I didn't. Well, see that the was fight. a bad first question for me to lead with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the fight, but I heard about it, and I heard you know it's, 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 that was a big uh, loss right now. Hmm. Um, I seen some of the uh, some of the uh, Heyman crew at the end of the night out. And about, and uh, they wasn't too happy. So I'm pretty sure that it was a, it was a bomb burner. So Zeb, you were you were out a couple of weeks ago at the uh, Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight. What did you think of the fight? And tell us a little bit about the aftermath. Um, very surprising, very surprising. Uh, Tyson Fury made me eat my words. You know, I'm um, leading up to the fight. All my press run tour that I did. <laughs> Spent mm -hmm. like uh, two, three hours in the tour room speaking to everyone about my predictions, about what I thought about the fight. And personally, I didn't see it going that way. I didn't mm -hmm. see it going nowhere near that way. What was your prediction? My prediction was Deontay Wilder in three rounds by knockout. Wow. To this day! Listen, I lost he one had to this wear fight, the, too. He would have had to wear the hat with you, Curtis. <laughs> Bomb squad. <laughs> so so they're going to have a rematch in a couple of months. Is Deontay ready for that? So I think, you know, like like I'm so talented. I'm so talented in just my thinkings and my thought patterns that I think that I was a little bit premature at my at my pick. I think now in the next fight, in the rematch, that's what's going to happen in my first pick. <laughs> so anybody that asks me, what am I taking? I'm taking my first pick all over again. I think it's going to happen this time. What would Wilder have to do to come back stronger at this fight? Don't think. Go in there, push two jabs in his face and throw that right hand like you're trying to reach for you in the strip club going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throw it fast and hard. This, now, his uh, his reason for saying that his legs were dead, he said that it was the costume that he wore. What were your thoughts on that when you heard about that? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if, if that's what he did, I don't know. I mean, but I'm not paying forty thousand dollars and not trying it on. You know, what yeah, I mean, trying I don't know it on, mean like that's horrible. Yeah, you know, what I mean, that's you know, I mean, that could have been a downfall in how he you know got taken out of me, but. That's not a that's that's the, I mean that's a wrong excuse. I mean right. if, if you're gonna if you're gonna use that one that oh I lost the fight because of my forty pound I be I lost my undefeated heavyweight championship of the world because my forty pound suit no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but did you agree with the stoppage for Mark Breland throwing in the towel? Yeah, I, but I you know saying like uh, as a fighter that last year had brain surgery you know saying due to. Uh, a dirty fighter, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, I'm I'm all about that, you know what I'm saying? And you see a fighter taking too many punches inside the ring. I mean, me now, after having my brain surgery, I sat down with a lot of, with a lot of doctors and I learned about the brain. The mm -hmm. brain and the head is not made to get hit on. You know what I'm saying? So every time a, a fighter or someone take a shot to the head, it's not good, you know what I mean? So for uh, Mark Billions to sit back and watch Deontay Wilder take a numerous shots to the head and him jumping in and, and, and being the chief guy in charge, and that's his decision. Hey, I mean, you got to go with it. But I got to ask you, because that's an interesting point you brought up. Um, so a lot of fighters have this mentality that uh, Wilder had, that I'd rather go out on my shield. Kill me. It's yeah, I, me too. I, everybody does. Uh -huh. Me too. But look. But now as a fighter that's experienced, unfortunately. Uh, I threw the chair, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, I wasn't with none of that. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to them. No, no disrespect to the ref, Jay mm. Nady, but that's my that's my guy now. But I went after the ref when he said, "I said, he said, oh, the fight is over." I said, "The fight is over." Oh no, 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 the fight just started. Now it's on you. <laughs> 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 it just started. You know what I mean? So definitely, I I, I totally understand Mark's positioning. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He probably said, he he, he he don't step back and said, you know, let us go back to the drawing board, put it back together again. And another day, we'll come back and do it again. Mm. Listen, fighters want to go out on their shield. Yeah. Guess what, motherfucker? You ain't come in on one. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. true. And sometimes with that type of mentality, unfortunately, uh, fighters actually need saving from themselves. You know, and yeah, I think course. that's where the trainer plays an important Listen, role, which I feel Mark Breland did a great part. As, as, a, as a man's a man, right? Deontay Wilder has 41 wins with 40. Well, actually, yeah, nice. 41 knockouts because Fury was knocked out in that fight. <laughs> Let's keep it. He had 41 knockouts. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, he feeling himself. Mm. He got big cojones. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, I'm the baddest man on the planet, supposedly. Of course I want to die in this motherfucker. Right. Because I don't want to hear the backlash. You see the memes? Mm. You don't want to hear yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing I didn't like about the fight was that Tyson Fury's knockout ratio is super low. Like, under, 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 
understand it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Way understand it. For him to knock out Deontay Wilder or have that on his record is like, whoa. <laughs> well, tell me what you think about his game plan. Did you think he had the right game plan coming into the second fight with? One hundred percent, one hundred percent. You know what? I even, I even give him a lot more credit because at the weigh-in, I kind of ridiculed him too. I was like, you know, he weighed in with a t-shirt on. I'm like, you know, like me being a fighter for 25 years, I know that as fighters, when we get to the scale, the number one thing that we're proud about is our body. Mm. So the last thing we're trying to cover up is all this hard work and dedication that we're right. gonna put in. So we're trying to. Rip our shirts off to show the world, like, oh, I'm ready, I'm ready, you know what I mean? <laughs> and when he came in with the T-shirt on, I said, oh, he must not be in shape. I said, oh, water going to kill him. Mm. So water going to kill him, but that was a throw-off, you know what I'm saying? I mean, because when he finally did take his shirt off, he didn't have a abs, not like a lightweight and like that, but he had like the heavyweight, super heavyweight abs. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Like the super heavyweight abs, like it's different, you know, like... Lightweights and small guys, even middleweights, they got diff a different figure. When it gets to the heavyweights and super heavyweights, they got different abs. It's in different places, so you gotta like <laughs> <laughs> catch the good angle. You know. <laughs> no, one thing I started noticing in the fight was when Fury started leaning on him. As soon yeah. as he started leaning on him, you see a wilder's legs just started giving up. So yeah. I, you know, and, and I still, I still say. The worst thing Wilder did for this fight is, is coming heavier than he did Hell in the yeah. first fight. Hell yeah, 235. Yeah. I heard him a lot. Yeah. Like, honestly, I heard him a lot. Honestly, what I thought was the turning point in that fight was when Wilder landed those two right hands in the in the, in the the first and second Fury round. Fury looked at him was, like, nah, you're and not Fury getting didn't, this time. He didn't react but he didn't, to it. But he didn't land and clean. I, well, it was, no, no, on TV, rolled, it looked clean. Listen, on TV, was, it looked clean. Again, I, I wasn't there ringside, but on TV, they looked, the shots looked perfectly clean. And I just think that he didn't get a similar reaction from Tyson Fury, kind of psychologically threw him off a bit and therefore he's like also I told you too leading up to the show that Tyson Fury's mentality in this coming into this fight was a bit stronger for the only fact that he's probably the only guy that can say that I got hit with Wilder's best shot and I got up he, so he already listen, had that type of mentality he had that mental toughness count, right? he had the mental <laughs> toughness going into this fight like this guy can't hurt me like he can drop me but he can't hurt me listen you know I, I, I'm from I, the hood I'm from the hood right you ever seen a crackhead get hit with a pipe and keep more hit and keep stealing yeah. shit out the yeah, garage? Right. Like, at the end of the day, Tyson Fury well, is the crackhead. A lot of people, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people in the hood say that um, when um, Deontay Wilder hit him, that he knocked that, that knocked that the soul out. No, him. no, that Deontay Wilder's soul jumped out of his body and in, into Tyson Fury's body. <laughs> and in a the rematch, they found out. <laughs> Listen, I just honestly think Fury got. Wilder's number. What, Simple what, as that. Well, no. So the no, rematch is going to go the no, same I think way. the rematch, I agree. Fury beats him again. I no, think no. so. I think push it, and I listen, listen. 50 push-ups push on go. call. Let's go. There we go. Oh, we got a bet. We got a bet. We have a bet. So wait, wait, wait. Let me explain to you what on call me. On call me, I could be walking. You could be walking the supermarket. Yeah, Supermarket on Christmas Eve with your whole family, with all the carrying everything. I'm going to walk up to you and say, how you doing? Just give me three. <laughs> you owe me 50, but just give me three. Like, it's just the, you gotta <laughs> drop everything yeah, and do it. So, give me three push ups. That's so it. So, after the rematch, nice when I bumped into Zab in the Barclays, I'm like, Zab, just give me five. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see him, I'm like, give me five. <laughs> but listen, in the bathroom, I, right? I, 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 I go on all of our Instagram. Funny feeds. thing is, I had Wilder in this fight. I really mm. thought Wilder was gonna knock him out. But for some reason, and I think Fury just Yo. has his number. I just think that mentally Fury, Fury's a little Fury's bit stronger listen, than Wilder. Wilder was not in shape, bro. Mm. He was breathing heavy after the first but listen, round. What is, what, let listen, let me tell you something. Listen, Wilder, I could go get a strength and conditioning training right now and get diesel out. right now. You think I'm in the best shape I'm of my a, life. I'm going to say something Zab just said. Like Zab said, you want to be a great fighter, you have to run. Wilder doesn't run. He don't mm. run. Mm. Wilder okay. doesn't run. I, I work with Mark, and Mark, like, he doesn't run. Does Mark run? No. <laughs> That's my man Shake Rowling Rose Mark gotta make him run Mark Make him run Mark Listen in Make him run That's horrible That's horrible man but what about our... What about the gloves? Tyson Fury with them floppy ass Ooh, gloves. That, that's, that's, that's a rumor that's been no, going no, no, around no, 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 I think no, no, we should no. try to settle this right hey, now Let me say something Zach we, As pro fighters You know once you put your glove How the fuck are you gonna take your hand off? Man, I There's see no some way. Pictures. I think it's just heavyweight he's like that. He yeah, just he's slaps slapping. his hand. He's showing that he just, yeah, he's not really, f he's not fully closing his hand. Yeah, that's he's what just I see. Slapping. So he's, he's punching not. illegally, basically. 
Listen, it's that's not, a illegal punch. Yeah, it is. I mean, but guess you know, what? He's Listen, getting away with it. No. He's getting away with it. But that's, that's how, how the air drum. He that's cuffed how... his ear and that suction popped that damn drum. Back in the days, if he had like the thumbless gloves, he would be he would have, the yeah. famous for jicking <laughs> guys <laughs> in the eye. <laughs> that shit happened to me before. <laughs> that shit happened He'd to be me He'd famous before. for that. The eye gouger. Listen, there's no way he could have made a fist, un- taken his hand out halfway and made a fist. Once you got those gloves on, this. No way you could take your fist. Especially out. a 10 ounce, but I don't know. There's no way. He was just know, slapping with that hand. Listen, one dude Maybe took. he got an artificial hand. Or look, look, <laughs> look one, dude took, one dude took stuffing out of the gloves and they put him on his but hand. I, but we're talking about back in the days, bro. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 still still it's still happening. It's still closely regulated now, the gloves. But I mean, it still happened, what, though. What, what if he took his hand off and left it in the locker room and had the little nub in it? That's why the glove was moving around. Yo, like, <laughs> yo listen. <laughs> I remember back in the days in the Golden Gloves, I seen one guy with a, with the nub. He was knocking everybody out with that shit. Oh, that's the he was in Gleason's way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Off. The, but then my boy ended up knocking him out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so man. now that these guys have fought, where does, uh, where, where does, um, I'm screwing up. Uh, we're going to have to edit my stumble here. But uh, Hey, Larry, when's your next fight? When's my next fight? <laughs> me, me and you in yeah. five minutes. Oh, shit. Anthony, Anth- all right. Anthony Joshua, where does he fit into this? Into Nowhere. This? Does, Nowhere. Does, does he beat Tyson Fury? Hell no. He don't beat any of them, bro. He don't beat nobody. So but for all I intents and purposes. Oh. You think you think Joshua beats yeah, who? Yeah. I think I think right now Joshua comes back and Joshua beats um on Tyson Fury. I don't think so. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think. I think. Through, well, then again, you have to look at I'm it. Styles fights. make fights too. Styles bro. make fights. Listen, let me tell you why. Anthony Joshua went through embarrassment of his life in New York City to uh, to Ruiz. He's never gonna let that opportunity come. Uh, just not in this lifetime happen again. So you're saying that if loss- he get if he get if if he lose this time, it's gonna be by yo. He got knocked out. He just, he just got caught. So you're saying that Lawrence made him a better fighter? Yeah, I believe so. I, believe I don't know. So. His next fight with Ruiz, he ran from him. And Ruiz is not the biggest. But it was, hey, listen, it was he, the right game plan. He, he, I think it was the right game plan. Boxing, yeah. buy, listen, everybody ain't made the step two and crack yeah. like that. You know. It's like you every, the, everybody you in the, the cash f- out king. <laughs> 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 you know. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? About our friend being the cash out king. Cash out king. I mean, he, he just, you know, he's known to just, if, if there's a situation... He's known to cash out and get some change out of you. <laughs> that's all. That's all to it. You know what I mean? That's it. Oh, it's on. It's on me. That's it. And then that fly. He was like, "Oh, he talking." <laughs> he was like, we gotta get him, nope. <laughs> so, Zeb, you were with Don King for many years. Oh Lord, how many? I don't know. <laughs> can, can you tell us a little bit what it was like to work with him? If you have any funny Don King stories. Yeah, Don King's a businessman. He's a he's a business guy. You know, he gets right to the business. You know, he's a hundred percent about if it can make if it can make dollars, it makes sense. And you know, that's one rule you gotta respect a person on. And you know, when a person has those type of standards and type of rules in life, you gotta just let, you know you. It's fair to say you you know you evaluate what you see. You know, sometimes as us being good people and good hearted, we like, oh, it can't happen to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm bigger than that. that ain't nah, nah. He did him like that, but you know, me, uh, and it, you know, you put your guards down. Did, did he do you like that? Is that what you're? No, I'm, I, I'm, I mean, yeah, me and Don King, we had a, we had a, a major dispute. A major, a major uh, are dispute. you on good terms with him now? We had a, a, a misunderstanding. It was, it was <laughs> a, a misunderstanding, misunderstanding cause yeah. a few zeros were missing or something. Yeah, it was it was a misunderstanding that got that way. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know, everybody is not on the um, eye level for conversation with you. Sometimes they're too big for you. So sometimes mm. when you bring a person down to your side, <laughs> now they can see you. <laughs> now they hear what you're saying. So sometimes, you know, I, I think with the whole Don King, Zab Judah situation was, you know, we just had to come to eye level with each other. <laughs> and once we came to eye level, everything was everything was gravy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Listen, mm-hmm. on the grounds that my brother might accumulate himself, we say no more. <laughs> right. Right. <That's> right. <laughs> now, now you, you you made friends with Mike Tyson at a very young age. What was like, that like, and what kind of advice did he give you when you're coming up? Um. Yeah. I met I met, I met Mike. When I was probably like, we just did it in my pocket. We were probably like six, seven years old. Uh, my father actually was. Um. I didn't know Mike. 
my father knew Mike. I was a kid. You know, Mike Tyson was, you know, he was big, Mike Tyson, and he was in Brownsville. We, you know, we lived in the same block, Herzl. He lived on one side, I lived on the other side. And uh, he was in the neighborhood one day, and my father was outside. My father ran into him and seen him, and he's like, yo, come, you know, come upstairs. I got my boys. They inspired him. Fired us. You know, we was six, so we ain't, we was nobody. You know, <laughs> we, you know I'm probably, probably seven years old, so we had like maybe two, two, three fights. You know what I mean? So, you know, we in the bed sleeping. It's, it's, it's like about maybe about three, four o'clock in the morning. My dad comes in there and wakes us up. He said, get up, get up, get up. I got a surprise for you. We come out of the living room, you know, you know, wiping across out the alley, looking, it's Mike Tyson. We like, oh, Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson. He's like, you know, he's like, hey, guys, hey, guys, what's up, what's up, what's up? He's like, you know, your father tell me that you guys, you know, want to be fighters. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going like, to be like you. We're going to be like you. We're like Tyson. <laughs> And, you know, people don't understand, you know what I'm saying, from that day and from, you know, just having that experience, like, like I seen something that was ill. I was like, oh, like, this is the gorilla that everybody watch on TV, and he's standing in my living room, like, like I'm like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, 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 in Brownsville, Mike was a big deal, you know, he was right. like, <laughs> he was a big deal, you know what I mean? So when Mike came around, the whole, everybody come outside, everything stopped. And now I got this man personally standing in my living room. Encouraging us, you know, that if we want to be fighters, what to do and what not to do. I mean, that was that was that that was dope. And then from there, we built a relationship. As I got older, you know, <laughs> I just I, I just started doing my little my little yeah. uh, Zab Tyson stuff. Yo, <laughs> he used to say, yo, we used to fight on like on his undercards. He used to say the funniest stuff oh, about yeah. you. He's like, look at Zab, he's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? Yo, Mike bugs out. You see. You gotta know Mike to understand Mike. You know what I'm saying? Mike is a, Mike is the most he's the dopest, most lovable dude like ever. You know what I'm saying? He's like he's like one of the most toughest, feared, craziest animals. But inside, like he'll say some of the most softest. You know what I'm saying? Like he like oh like he'll take all the fight out of you with a with a conversation. He'll take you know like all the gangster in you. He'll take it out of you. Like come on, <laughs> brother, just sit down, brother. Let's of course, see. look. He used to knock people out and yeah, kiss them on the cheek. Who's going to be a gangster around him? Yeah, yeah. Look, uh -huh. he, he knocked people out and kissed them on the cheek. Right. I mean, <laughs> he, I, I, mean I wouldn't say he, that. Then he breaks down the definition of gangster to you. Like, he says you like he's he, he he's a walking encyclopedia. No joke. Mm -hmm. What is the definition Historian. of a gangster? Huh? What's his definition of a see, gangster? You got, you see, you got to be there. You got to be there. I cannot tell the man stories. <laughs> <laughs> cannot tell. Not on the Larry show. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Zab Judah show this week. <laughs> well, I got to ask you, because you actually share something very interesting with uh, Mike Tyson, Riddick Bowe, yourself. Probably the only three undisputed champions who've, I guess, never heard of all coming from the same town. Basically. Same, not, neighborhood. Not, same neighborhood. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, it's sorry, different. Same neighborhood. Same neighborhood. Same, same hey, neighborhood. Town, I'm sorry. I'm town. sorry. Same neighborhood. Yeah. Like, that's extraordinary. It's like, crazy, right? How does yeah. that make you feel, bro, going down in history as, like, just one of those three that accomplished that? Mm -hmm. um, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I'm saying? I, I thank every, you know, I thank God for just putting me and giving me the skills and putting me in a position to even go along and just complete you know what I'm saying, to compete and even do that. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, in that kind of road, it's like being on an old country road, right? Think about this, being on an old country road, and on the same block, you got three of the biggest company owners on the same block. You got Pepsi, you got Coke, and then you got, what's one more? Sprite? Sprite. 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 Yeah, you got on the Sprite same road. <laughs> Dr. Right. Pepper. Right. See, what you got to watch it because one owns all of them. You know that, right? Like, <laughs> like one of them owns everything. So, but I'm saying, like, that's how it, that's, that's how it is when you look at it. And there's no other city in in United States as far as boxing that even had anything close to that. And that day when you walked into your living room and you saw Mike Tyson, there's like, in your wildest dreams, did you ever envision that something like that was ever no, going to occur? No, you I, accomplished so I much. I was in six your years old. I didn't, I didn't have much of a vision. Back then. <laughs> <laughs> he was just about to get in trouble yeah. peeing in the bed. Yeah, and yeah. Then yeah. Mike Tyson. Like, Come on. Mike saved me because I'm about to pee in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming in, Mike. <laughs> oh, no. So now going down your career, mm -hmm. you've had fights with your resume unreal, mm -hmm. Miguel Cotto. Uh, Floyd, mm -hmm. um, Corey Spinks, Mickey Ward, like 
tell us a little bit. Like, what was your most memorable fight? Would you say St. Louis? Mm. I, that, that's well, my that was, yeah. That was what, let, let's let's that, put that a, was one of my, my, my second Corey Spring fight in St. Louis. I probably one of the biggest the biggest fights in my career of the moment. Like there, there was no prestige, nothing bigger than that. I mean, we we actually went into hostile territory and took and left. Like some, Brooklyn, <laughs> like, like some like we did some real Brooklyn Cowboy stuff. Like, you know what I mean? For real. Team saw and conquer. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Big shout to St. Louis. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Big shout to St. Louis. But at the time when I went down there, St. Louis was like on the, you know, like this street this is street stuff right here. At the time when I went in there, St. Louis was known as the number one murder rate capital. It was, it was, wow. was number one. Number and here goes some Brooklyn boys coming into St. Louis talking about we can really take everything in the <laughs> me. They put up a good fight, though. I ain't going to lie. Inside and outside. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Inside and outside. You know what I'm saying? But um, at the end of the day, Brooklyn was, was very victorious. That's, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> and going back to the Mickey Ward fight, mm-hmm. you were 15-0 and 0 at the time. Yeah. And I read online somewhere that apparently there was a moment where he had hit you with a nice uh, left hook to the body. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that story? Mickey Ward, toughest fight of my career. Mm. Out of everybody, everybody would say, you know, he fought Floyd, he fought Cotto, he fought who was the toughest guy, I said, Mickey Ward. Mm. And it was because at the timing of the fight, I was I was I only had 15 fights. I was just coming into my own and, you know, just like starting to smell my piss. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and he was like the Irish Mickey Ward already. He was already like the king. Like he was already stopping guys with body shots uh-huh. and he was in title fights and so this, this is my first time going even for a title, like for a belt, like you know what I mean. So like, you know, at the uh, at the pre, you know, at the first press conference when they announced the fight, we came together and I finally get to see who Mickey Ward is. And I'm looking at him, I'm like you know, at the time I think I was, I wasn't even 20 years old yet. Mm. I was I wasn't even 20 years old yet. I think I was like 18 years old. And uh, no, no, I was 19. I was 19 years old. And they're like, you know, this is Mickey Ward. And I'm looking at him like, what? How did that's an old man. I'm gonna crush. I'm gonna crush. I'm gonna crush by the time. You know what I'm saying? And and you know, at the time, I was I was, I, was, I was just a young lion, a young warrior, a young. Never, never. You know, I, my amateur career was 115 wins and five losses. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't even know how to lose. I didn't know. I didn't know nothing about being hurt, being none, nothing. I was like, Mickey, what? Bring him. And I ain't gonna lie. And I think it was the seventh to eighth round, he hit me with a body shot. Pop, pop. Like, like, like we prepared for this for this signature body shot that he throws on everybody. We prepared for it. He threw it a couple times earlier in the fight, and I caught it. Bing, bing, bing. So he was like, okay. He went to something else. Threw my mind up over here, and he snuck it in there. Boom! I said, oh <laughs> shit! Said, what was that? I looked at him. He started. He he noticed it off the top. He knew that he hurt me. He started. He started walking to me. I was like, yeah, yeah. I started moving. I was like, for like, I must have moved for about thirty seconds. No, mm-hmm. m- maybe, maybe, maybe a cold minute, a whole minute. I moved around the whole ring and I stayed away from Mickey Ward. I did jabs. I even turned around one time and ran from him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like, like Mickey, you getting too close? You know what I mean? Back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. The bell ring, ding. I go to the corner. I sit down. My dad like, come on, come on, come on. I was in there. Yeah, he like he like what 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 I'm like Come. I think you broke my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody that knows my father knows my dad is a man's man 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 man. He's a hundred percent. He's an alpha man. Max. What? Fuck that! Fuck that! Fucking ribs. What side? I'm like right here. He's like good. Turn to the other side. Don't let it hit that side. I'm like what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like and like what kind of advice is that, man? <laughs> then he grabbed me like he like massaged like both of them right like, really like really, really hard. I was like what? Like, He's like listen, fuck that. We came here for this. Don't step to this motherfucker. Let it go. Let your hands go. Get to him. Let your hands go. None. Stop. Hit it with everything. I said, oh, I said, I'm not. <laughs> when, when, the bell, when the bell said ding, I got up and said, I got up more confused after the corner with my dad. I said, oh, man. I said, this is going to be a long night. But I came right back out there, and I just told myself, I started with some jabs. And I came right back out there, and I hit him back with some big shots. And after that, I was back in the fight. Damn. Yeah, but Mickey Boy, that, that, that moment, I remember, I ain't never felt like that, that, 
you know, like it's like almost in a video game. You know how when you play a video game and then like now with the new game you get shot and then they start like blurring the screen out. It's yeah. like getting blurry. That's how I was feeling. I was feeling like, no, I'm going down. No, no. no. I was like, no, I can't. I can't. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but luckily I never felt that again no more. So that's why I say that had to be a hell of a moment. <laughs> so Mickey Ward, you got it. That <laughs> dude one of the blood and guts warriors, man. Word, no joke. Does I have? <laughs> now taking it back to your pro debut, you fought on the undercard. Sorry, you were the co-main event of Pernell Whitaker. Yeah, scary. That was extraordinary. Scary. <laughs> Tell me about that experience. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. Scary. Like so. Here we go. We we have it. You know. Um, I come back home from the, from the Olympic trials. You know, I'm in New York with Shelly Finkel and Lou Duva, like, come to camp, keep, you know, keep training with Whitaker. But at the time, prior, I'm already training with Whitaker. I've been training with Whitaker since I was 15 years old. Mm. You know what I'm saying? From from the first time with me winning the Golden Gloves, Lou Duva seen me that night, came in my locker room and said, wow, how did you know how to fight like that? Like, you fight just like Pernell Whitaker. Like, and I'm like, I don't know. I, I fight like what my dad told me how to fight. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, and my dad don't fight like Whitaker. So, like... I don't know what you're talking about. And it was like, how would you like to go to camp with Pernell Whitaker? Now, remember, I'm I'm a, I'm a kid. I'm like, at the time, Pernell Whitaker is, he's Pernell the biggest, Whitaker. He, yeah, he's the biggest thing in boxing. I'm like, go to camp with Pernell Whitaker and do what? <laughs> and, and spar with him. Sp- you want me to spar <laughs> with Pernell Whitaker? Uh, you can't hit Pernell Whitaker with nothing. You know what I mean? Like, 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 you know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm like, this is impossible. You know what I mean? So long story short. I go to camp with Pernell Whitaker. They told me, oh, by the, oh, by the, oh, by the way, this is professional training camp. You can't bring nobody. Mm-hmm. We, got our, we got our trainers there. We got everything you need. We got everything. You can't bring nobody with you. So I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I'm a kid. My father go with me. I never even flew in an airplane by myself or nothing. Like, like what? And like, listen, man, you could be good. And you know what I'm saying? So do it. And my pop talk. And my pop said, cool, you be all right. Just go in there and get busy. And um, I went down there. And sky's the limit from there. So, and then, so that was 15 years old. Then, now I had, now I had this. I was um, 18 years old. 18 years old, I turned pro. I'm opening up Pernell Whitaker in Miami. You know, like when Duva came to me, it was like, you know, because in the training camp, I used to get busy. I ain't a friend. I used to get busy with everybody. Get busy, 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 busy. So, Duva said, Your pro debut is going to be big. I want it to be big. I want it to be big. I said, Okay, you know, I don't know what that is, whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to fighting in like little, we fought in like yeah. school, school, like high school gyms mm-hmm. like that. Where they put a ring in the middle and people get in there. It's never in my life fought in an arena with, you know, that 20,000 seat arena. When I got out there and I got in, I was like, oh. <laughs> like, if you go back and watch the tape to, to today, it was Zab Judah versus Mike Johnson. I was standing in the corner, stiff as a boy, dude. I didn't even, I didn't even know, like, when they took off my, my jacket, you know what I mean? I was like, I felt naked. Like, yeah, I, yeah, the gloves was mad little. I was like, "Oh shit!" So look, <laughs> first of all, in the locker room, my dad scared the holy living shit out of me. Right, we in the locker room, so you know, I put the gloves on. We, you know, we hitting the, you know, the um, pads and shit. So I'm like, "Yeah, ooh!" I said, "Boy, when he feels lazy, he's gonna kill him." My dad said, "Oh yeah, I want you to know, you know, same way those going out, they coming back at you the same way too." He throwing the sound. Like, oh shit! So now I'm thinking, you know, I'm over here cracking on the pad. Boom, 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 boom. He like. That's coming right back at you. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> now your mind start thinking. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me slow down for a second. You know what I mean? And just uh, round one rung, he came out and I felt like he was trying to hurt me. And that was all she wrote. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's all she wrote. And he, and he went cash out. Before. And after, yeah, and, that, and after I got my first knockout, and it was like, it was like nothing. It was like no sweat. It was like no pressure, no nothing. Like I didn't even feel nothing. So at the, at the first time, I was like, oh, maybe it was a fluke. Second time, they came, boom, boom. Didn't even feel it. Like, wow. Third time. Then I then I just got, I got starving. Like every fight, I was going for the knockout. Like just <laughs> forget skills, forget anything, just go straight for the knockout. It was crazy. <laughs> Pernell was like, slow down, boy. Slow down. <laughs> slow down. <laughs> 
Word. That's that Brooklyn. That's that Brownsville yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> you ain't never, you ain't never been in Bessie Head. You know, you know, you be in Bessie Head pool. You drink the pool water sometimes. Man, listen. <laughs> Bessie Head pool is probably the only swimming pool you can swim. You be swimming, doing you know the breaststroke, the butterfly, whatever, and a little piece of doodle float right by your head. <laughs> like, 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 what the? That's doodle. <laughs> walk, walk, walk back in the locker room. Your sneakers gone. <laughs> you were going back. You have a bad day, you know what I'm saying? You're like, I'm swimming next to some doo doo and they stole my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good day for me. Hell no. Oh, man. So, what is like the best advice you've ever gotten um, from a boxer as far as your career is concerned? From a boxer? From a boxer about boxing, a trainer, manager. Like, who gave you the best advice? Probably Whitaker. He said, yo, don't the 12 round. In the 12th round, when that last bell ring, that shit felt good, right? I said, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when it's over, it's over, brother. That feel good as hell. Hell yeah. Like, people don't understand what it takes or, or what it's like to go a 12-round fight with a real live opponent that's like, Arr. you know what I mean? You grunting at him, he grunting at you in round one. Grunt at you, grunt at him, round two. Grind at you, grind at him, round three. Like, like, dude, people don't understand what that is until you step foot through the ropes. You know what I mean? I, I tell people all the time, like, all of my boys know, all of my boys go to the gym. They got to come to the gym. You got to hit that bag. Get on that bag. Get get your gloves on. You know, first thing, the homies on the street, they, they want to come to the gym. The first thing they want to do, Curry, you know, they want to spar. Mm-hmm. Everybody want to spar. Like, no, 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 no. You ain't up to that yet. <laughs> Put them gloves. Go hit that bag. He's like, you put the bag on for three minutes, they be like, Stop playing with the clock. I'm playing with the clock. <laughs> <laughs> Those three minutes feel like forever. <laughs> like, man, it's got to be fucking 18 minutes, man. Like, man, it's only two minutes, man. Shut up. Keep going. <laughs> you know what I mean? So until somebody that's never really dealt that or felt that, step into that rope and, you know what I'm saying, touch it for the first time, is it's totally different. Can you get a, a little deeper into that? <laughs> the psychological thing when you're in there with someone who's just as, who wants it just as bad as you do. Like, tell us a little bit, like, so we can get a better, for the people that not, are not familiar with that, they, think they can get a better understanding or a close understanding to what it's like. Uh, how would you explain that? Well, Mike Tyson told you guys the best. Everybody got a plan until they get punched in the face. Mm. That's a fact. Once they get punched in the face, uh, whatever you was thinking, you, you know, everybody's like, it's like your little, your little sister coming out, ah, ah, the boy outside is back. you like, what? Like, you know you can't fight. What? Where? Who? Where? <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> Where you at? Where, boop. <laughs> and from reality set in, you like, you know what? I am not a fighter, and whatever you did to her, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was that Friday. You look at your sister like, get your ass in the house. You should have been out here. <laughs> Why you was in his way for anyway? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, definitely, you just you look at the whole situation different. Hmm. Now, talking about two top fighters fighting each other. Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford. Who Ooh. wins? Them my boys. Both of them. Both of them my boys. They're my two favorites in boxing right now. As far as in that weight class. Um, I don't want to see the fight happen. I don't want to see it happen. But it has um, to happen. It has to happen. It has to happen. I know that. And Who do you see winning? I mean, one well, thing. This this guy right here is never loses. I go with the winner. This guy right here, I promise you, the winner is going to win. I promise you. The guy that Terrence said- Crawford. I think that crosses. I promise you, the winner's gonna win. <laughs> the, the winner is gonna win, ladies and gentlemen, right I there. I promise you. I bet. I bet everything on it. The winner <laughs> is gonna win. I bet you guys. Let's go. That was, that was the best prediction I've ever <laughs> heard. <in my> life. <laughs> the winner, the gonna winner win. is gonna win. He's gonna win. I promise that. <laughs> what do you think about both of them? You know, have they both have controlled the waterweight division? Right. How, what are your thoughts? Phenomenal. Um. Um, electrifying. Um, both of them. They both get busy. They both got good jabs. They both got good boxing fundamentals. They, they both, both got heart fight. to know how to want to stand in there. And when, if, if they got to bang it out, they both will stand there and bang it out with anybody. You know what I mean? And um, when you have young fighters, you know what I'm saying, like that, you know what I'm saying, for me to sit back and watch from scratch and watching them, from you know, because I watched both of those guys from day one come up, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, and watch them guys turn pro. Climb to the top, and uh, and uh, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Get into a welterweight class and be champion of the world. I mean, they haven't yet became undisputed welterweight champions. Ah. 
they would have to fight each other for them to become the undisputed. You know what I'm saying? So until that happens, you know, <clears throat> I'm still there. You know? <laughs> but no, but those guys right there, man. I mean, I take my hat off to both of them. Um, if they do fight, I wish them well. I wish that uh, God bless them to go into the ring and come out the same way. That's what's and up. And like I said, the winner is going to be the winner. Yes, <laughs> the winner is going to be the yeah. winner. You heard it here first on BoxingInside.com radio. The Zab winner has is going to be the winner. 50 push-ups on the winner. <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's, actually, that's actually on the Wilder Fury fight. Oh, no, yeah. this one too. Yeah. He's going to bet the winner. So. <laughs> We're going to get one and a half right here under the table during the show. <laughs> one and a half. Like, well, what's that? How you no. that? <laughs> I'm going to bump into Zab in the bathroom. I'm like, five push-ups, Zab. Right there next to the urinal. <laughs> right there. I, I ain't even worried about that. Do I look worried? I promise y'all. I promise y'all. Nah. The businessman that Al Heyman is, he's going to make, I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to take Deontay Wilder to that ice cold cave and have that long <laughs> conversation talk with him. You know what I'm saying? When Al Heyman and Deontay Wilder come out of that ice cold cave, they're going to have the game plan. Mm. All right. Do you think it was smart getting that immediate rematch right after the lo a loss like that to o Fury? Yeah, I think so. I think it was, it was a well-deserved uh, rematch. You know, here you had a guy that that uh, demolished for so long. I mean, he was the king mm. for so Thanks. long. I mean, he ran into, you know, what people could look at as a stumbling block. You know, would, I mean, would you have happens. taken a tune-up fight though before fighting? No, because nah, then nah, you lose. Nah, if you got nah, bit, you know. lose. Guess what? You lost. Listen, to listen. A tune-up dude. The way that, how how <clears throat> flip flopsy the heavyweight division is right now, brother. Take every opportunity and run with it because. Thanks. It's no telling. Yeah. Joshua could turn around and fight Fury and beat and beat him. Mm -hmm. Now, the, now the belts is somewhere else far. Now, you, now you have a long time to get it back. Now, you know what I'm saying. So I say, the way he's flip flops you right now, and there is no solid, 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 solid guy right now. I say go after it. Automatic. Definitely. Look, look. Al him is one of the, the biggest and the smartest businessmen. Look at in look at Adam. Business. Look at Adam Kalnacki. He was number one for Anthony Joshua's belt. Five, six million down the drain. He just lost. Mm. Mm. Now, Paluof, it gets a shot. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is a Paluof? <laughs> the number one contender. Cancel Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so now, bringing it back to your career again, Zab. Um, Here we go. Honestly, listen. You ready? Floyd Mayweather. You were the first. No, you were the only one I'm knocking Drop them. Down them. In yeah. the Drop. pros. I don't care what people say. They played the replay. It was a clean knockdown. When you went back in the tape and you revisited that moment, how did you feel knowing that they didn't count that down uh, accordingly, uh, fairly, I, as a knockdown? I felt like you. Mm. I felt just like you. I mean, not only did I get robbed, the fans of the world got robbed too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But um, as long as I got people like yourself and people that – people, you know, one thing I would tell people, you could fool people by – far and they can hear stuff and tell them anything but you can't fool the people's eyes anybody that's seen it knows what happened knows what's what they know about the situation that happened facts you know what i'm saying there was a huge build-up up to that fight too and honestly uh leading up to the fight i thought you were going to be the one to finally give him his first loss mm -hmm. you know um when you revisited the uh that that fight on tape afterwards in your in your opinion what you what do you think you could have done better what was the difference in this fight for you to have come out on top of uh, with the decision? Um, I don't know. I mean, if I just had maybe a better, a better, um, a fair a system mm. to look at what what you know what happened was. I mean, in a fight when me and Floyd was fighting, there was a low blow that was given by myself, and Floyd was moving around, and Roger Mayweather and Lennon Ellaby chose to come into the ring. You know, just by itself. Every, everybody in boxing knows there's two fighters are fighting in the referee in the ring. Anybody else from either corner well, gets up and comes well, to the ring. It's right. an automatic, automatic disqualification. Why that why that never happened? It beats the shit out so of me as well. Two unfair calls. <laughs> there was fines on, and suspensions. A lot listen, of weird stuff came out of that. Listen, fight. Floyd is off Mr. Las Vegas. And Floyd didn't get Floyd didn't lose a dollar. A you know, dollar listen, or, or, or no sleep. Vegas don't like Brooklyn, son. <laughs> Vegas don't like Brooklyn, son. Come I on. wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I I, I lived in Las Vegas for uh, fifteen years. Oh, that's what's up. You know I what I'm saying? Mean, I had a lot of fun out there. You know what I'm saying? I had a lot of fun out there. Vegas was good to me. I, li I liked it, Vegas. 
<laughs> well, the Vegas Athletic Commission, I should say. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't, I don't think it was that. I think it was a team that was involved at the time. That was just it was just a money team that was involved that was mm-hmm. going around. That you know, you keep him good, he gonna keep then you gonna keep this money coming in here. Right. You know, we got a system. We are not gonna break that. You know. That's so this is a little Brooklyn thug. From Brownsville, Brooklyn, Wait, hold over on, hold here on. with Don what, King. What Don King, Don King called you? He's the urchin of the ghetto. Yeah, the urchin, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Don King, you know. Yeah, what the man, fuck is crazy. the urchin of the ghetto? <laughs> exactly. And man. then fast forward a few years later, uh, I believe he was getting ready for Pacquiao. You were a sparring partner for Floyd. Yeah. Talk us a, a little bit about that. Um, We went into camp. You know, he was fighting a left-hander. He called me up and, you know, said, you know, if... If we're gonna do it, if we're gonna um, if you know what I'm saying um, you know I'm I'm going to fight Pacquiao, you mm. know what I'm saying come in here and help me, come get down with me and um let's you know let's put together you know what I'm saying I got a game plan I just want to be able to see the fast hands and the quick stuff and you know give me that that lightning speed that good power that I know you got mm. you know what I'm saying and you know at the time you know what I mean listen man up into the fight even after the fight now you know Floyd's my brother been my brother and you know that's what it is. That's what's up. It'll go down like that. So now, right. on your experience with the fight again with Floyd, like Andre Berto gave a quite insightful uh, experience, what his experience was being in the ring with Floyd. What's your experience like? Like, What's your insight on what it's like being in the ring? Oh, your what was in the ring with Floyd? Uh, Andre, Andre Berto. Berto. Oh, Berto. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what to say? I remember that. <laughs> um, he's good. He's, he's very... Um, um, defensive minded person. He's very defensive minded. He's um, you know, even we, you know, we, we make through certain certain moves. That, you know, you just notice that you know, it's like like you got some fighters that just come to you straight. Like, mm. you mean you you can faint at them. They don't even move. Like, <laughs> like you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. They just come in head. You know what I'm saying head head first. But um, he's very um defensive uh minded. Mm. You know what I'm saying. That's day one. That I can say he got. Andre Berto mentioned that he caught him a few times checking the clock. Did, at any point in your fight, did you notice him like taking a peek at the clock to see where he was in, on time in the round? Different time of life, different different era. Mm. In, my, in my fight, there was no clock looking down. Because it couldn't be. That yeah, straight left for the uppercut would have came from somewhere. It was, was, was <laughs> stay focused at all times. You, you, you know what I'm saying? And, and even on my part, I'm going to say, Floyd is fast. I, I ain't no time to be looking at the goddamn clock. You know what I mean? Like, he would have caught me. You know right. what I mean? So, yeah, and I would fight. It wasn't there. It wasn't no, no clock looking. Gotcha. Yeah. No clock looking. <laughs> <laughs> now, looking to the future, what about uh, Devin Haney? What can you tell us about him? He's the future of boxing. I mean, he is the future and now of boxing. I mean, he is... What I've been telling people for years, I mean, I've been talking about Devin since <laughs> forever. You know what I mean? I've been telling guys as a young kid coming up, he ain't no joke. He works very hard. And the reason why I was so hyped on him and so gun ho to him was his work ethics at such a young age. He was willing to do stuff that even professionals were not even willing to take and do. You know what I'm saying? So, so you know, when that, as that being said, I was like, man... This kid right here, once he get a, once he turn professional and get his head on right, he's gonna be something special. Yeah, he definitely is something special. Yeah. And how involved are you with his career? Um, I wouldn't say involved in his career. Um, I'm his godfather. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. And, um, that's my godson. I've been with him from day one, man. Um, seeing the kid blossom into the man that he's become today, and um, you know, you know, I'm 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 there for anything he need. He know that. You know, him and his pops know anything. Zabs, whatever. I'm, I'm one call away and the airplane ride away. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they know that. We're pulling up. So, um, you know, with that being said, you know, the kid could pretty much handle himself. He has very smart handlers around him, his father, his brothers. And, um, you know, his family's going to take great care of him and make sure that, you know, Devin Haney had nothing to worry about but boxing. Mm. That's what's up. That's what's up. Great to have, good to have a great team around you. No joke. It means a lot. So what's your thoughts on the uh, YouTubers coming to boxing? I like it. I like it. I, I think everybody should come to boxing. I think the, 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 the boss of, the, of, the, of, the, of, of uh, American Express, he should fight the visa boss. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. but, but, but do you think that they're adding new fans to boxing? Or how, how, I mean, when they had their fight last, 
pretty much everyone left before the main event. And that's sort of been something we've been speaking about on the show, which is the zone is using him to try to get subscribers, but yet it doesn't seem like the people who are Logan Paul fans are going to come and stick around for Devin Haney. See, you got to remember this. At the end of the day, it's not about them leaving whenever. They pay to get in there. The job is done, brother. You can leave as soon as you, you can pay and leave as soon as you come. We don't care. The money's in there already. You know what I mean? So, you know, these guys are the biggest YouTubers of, of the world today. I mean, they got like 30 million followers and, you know, they have fan base. So what they say and what they would do is, you know what I'm saying? Listen, a natural reaction of everybody in life. If I get into a dispute or something like that with me, girl, yo, people want to fight. What? What? Come on in. Let's fight. Okay. I know how we can do this. We go. We could go do this on a boxing match live in the Staples Center in L.A. Wow, who don't want to do that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who don't want to do that? But don't you think it's disrespectful <clears throat> that you're putting on world champions are on their undercard? Yeah, that's disrespectful. No, I don't think it's disrespectful. I think that um, for anything, Devin gained exposure. He gained exposure in the crowd that maybe didn't know anything about Devin Haney. You and know they what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Now people these people get to watch him. They get to see him, you know what I'm saying, see him in action and go, oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Like people, when people meet you and they get to know you, they have a person with you. Now you're like, oh, I know Curtis. It's different. You know what I'm saying? I know you. I hung out with him. I was around him. That's my boy. You know what I mean? That's the difference in somebody saying, yo, you know who Curtis is? Like, well, I don't know. What's his, what's his joint? Spice? Well, oh, oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's different. They don't know what you're talking about. They don't know the character. They haven't seen the makeup yet, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But once you come and meet people, it's the same thing that I tell people about myself. There's a lot of people in the world that's watch me from afar. They've never met me. They only heard about me, and they don't like me. I, I don't like him. Uh, he's cocky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I always tell people, to know me is to love me. If you meet me and we get to kick it, then you understand me. You understand where I'm coming from. You understand my temperament. Mm-hmm. You understand everything that's going on with me. You know what I'm saying? But if you just stand back with your hands crossed with the little school face and you're looking at me from afar, yeah, you might you might see some things that you might not like. <laughs> I don't like him. And, you know, you got to deal with it. <laughs> so now, uh, Maurice Hooker versus, um, how do you pronounce his name? Progress? Progress. Progress. Your thoughts on that fight? I got Regis. You know what? This is funny because I remember I'm Gil Clancy doing my fight. And um, in the Golden Glove one time, and um, he says, "Zab Judy, he throws a good hook. He's a good hooker." And his daughter um was next to him. She was saying, "She said, Dad, we have ladies on the next fight. Could you please not if, they have, if one of them have a good hook, please don't call him a good hooker." <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, Maurice Hooker, and um, I'm not I'm not too um. Uh, 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 school you know, on these guys right mm. now. You know what I'm saying? Like like a lot of the new guys today, if they're not really popular name, the first name basis, you know, they're not, you know, yeah. I, I, I don't really know too much about you. Listen, listen. He watches baseball, <laughs> but only in the World Series. <laughs> only in the World Series. <laughs> he likes basketball only at the uh, NBA Finals. That's it. That's it. Or the All-Star Game. Or the know? Super Bowl. The Super Bowl for football. That's it. So some fantasy matchups here. Uh, what what fights for the fighters that you do tune in to watch? What's some fights that you would want to see? Um, definitely not the uh, uh, Earl Spence and Crawford fight. <laughs> 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 not <laughs> no, but um, fights that I do want to see. Um, yeah, I like to see um Devin's wish list. I like to see Devin get his wish list. You know, mm-hmm. Devin won all of these guys. You know, he won Tank. He won Lermachenko. He won, you know, Ryan Garcia. He won X Y and Z. I mean, you know. At, at the standpoint of uh, whenever he went, those guys, those guys know that's my godson. So, yes, I'm biased to the situation. And I'm honest, he can fight. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I will be, then I will be 100% of support for him. You know what I'm saying? So just know that. You know, I always tell fighters, you know, don't come to a fight, oh, look, I just have Jude over there. I mean, I love him, man. Why are you over there for? Like, you, know, you can still love me, but this is this is my pick. This is right. my this family. Is, you know, family. What I mean? it's That's family. Right. You know what I mean? It's That's just, right. It's beyond boxing right now. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you guys will see me over there with Devin, no matter what. And and and, and I know from watching him and, and being around him and knowing his work ethics, he's gonna be victorious. Ain't nobody gonna touch him. 
Undisputed? Undisputed, hey. 100%. <laughs> undefeated too. And you uh, heard it here first. You don't get the undisputed, undefeated, yeah. And you heard it here first on Boxing Inside already. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Live. Live. But Larry Live. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I cannot believe we went through this whole broadcast and not shout out my man, Notorious B.I.G., RP Shout. to my man Biggie Smalls. Shout to this is Death Day. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, we, being that we violated in a major way, you know what I'm we saying? We did violate. Everybody got to give a big verse up. Everybody got to oh, give a Biggie Small oh, verse up. Oh, you got to dig in your bag. <laughs> you better act Siri. Siri, give me a Show Biggie love. Small it's verse. It's the Brooklyn way. There we go. Come on. <laughs> I mean, if it was Guns N' Roses, I'd be able to help you out, but I, I hey, can't Siri. help you out. Hey, Siri, give me a Biggie Smalls verse. <laughs> <laughs> you better do something, boy. Go ahead, Jose. Get on it. Live from yeah, Bedford, Stuyvesant, the livest one. Representing BK to the fullest. Gats, I pull it. And gas is dusting with big be ducking, chicken heads be bucking. And my bathroom plucking. <laughs> it ain't nothing. You know, we be handling with the Mac in the back and the act. Friends screaming in and, and screaming in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> Let's go, Larry. You better, you, you better get this talking to Siri. I got it. I got seven Mac 11s, about eight. 38, nine, nine, 10 Mac 10s. The shit's never in. And you can't touch my Richard. Even if you had MC Hammer in them 357, bitches. Biggie Small, the millionaire, the mansion, mansion, the yacht, the two weed spots, the two hot, hot glocks. <laughs> That's how I got the weed spot. spot. I shot dread in the head, took, took the, the bread in the, the land, land spread. spread. <laughs> Little shoddy got the gotti to your body. So don't resist or, or you, you might miss Christmas. Christmas. I tow guns. I make number runs. I give them seeds that run dripping. When I throw my clip in the AK, I spray from far away. Everybody hit the D-E-C-K. My flow so remarkable. Peace to Mateo. Now we smoke weed like Tony Taylor Sniff the Yayo. That's crazy blunts. <laughs> Booker in the house. You already know. That's a fact. Yeah. You know, I was about to do the exact same rap and Curtis just <laughs> took, took the words right out of my mouth. You see, I, I, I was a rapper once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me hear something. I got nothing. Nah, you <laughs> gotta I got, have I got nothing. Come on. Drop that, you drop that bar mitzvah. You put your foot in your mouth, man. Now we gotta. Hear <laughs> Yo, you gotta look, look. Drop that mo- that bar mitzvah flow. Come on. Baruch Atah Adonai. Even Biggie said we coming to your bar mitzvahs. Mm-hmm. Biggie said that. Yeah. <laughs> let me just say that I wish you guys were at my bar mitzvah. Oh yeah. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it would have been a lot. Curtis of fun. Zab stole all the presents. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Bongo. You know those Jewish, those those Jewish bar mitzvahs. They be coming in with, with some, my, with some nice with some envelopes good stuff too. Yeah, yeah, nice envelopes. Nice we like envelopes. to make it rain. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, listen, man, uh, Zab. Honestly, it was an honor to have you on the show, bro. Yeah. Beyond. Thank you for you having know. me. Word up. When you coming come back? back and, we got, listen, whenever, man. You know me, man. I'm off the block, around the block. You are I'm absolutely. off the block, around the block, down the corner. Down the street from where the print prostitutes and the drug lords meet. <laughs> Funny, so are we. How, how does that work out? Word out. But no, it was truly an honor to have you. Listen, I grew up watching you on TV, bro, and I never in my craziest dreams would I ever think I'd be sitting beside oh, you right. in the reunion. So honestly, bro, yo, you got cash hey. out sitting next to yo, you. Yo, check How this out. You know not expect <laughs> not to see me. Check this out. You know me and Zad went to the Playboy Mansion, right? Did you? All right. Let's I go. Yeah, yeah, quick I story. Let's see. Hold on. Quick story. Quick story. With the real Hugh Hefner. With the real Hugh Hefner. <laughs> That's right. Nah, I was in the back warming up. I'm nervous as shit. It's my second profile. I'm like, God damn. I don't see nobody in the crowd. I'm like, damn, that's Donovan McNabb. I don't even like him. I'm a cowboy fan. I'm sitting there. So I'm coming out. I just hear, God, it's all God, it's all God. <laughs> I said, thank the Lord. <laughs> there you go right we there. out here, boy. We, we lit. Here. Let's I'm go. Like, yeah. Brooklyn. The battery was there. Third round <laughs> knockout. Third round. We had fun out there. And we was with the real bunnies. The baby. real hey. bunnies. Real bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Zeph, Playboy. Before you go, Playboy. I wanted to ask you, you've been doing a lot of acting. You're on Law yeah. & Order. You've got right. a, uh, yeah. You have like a reality show on Boss Up. Yeah. Um, t- tell us a little bit about what's going on. Well, yeah. On. Well, I'm, I'm into the film right now. I mean, that's my crossover world right there now. I'm doing acting, producing, and directing right now. Um, I have a, a current show. Um, I'm producing a show right now on this, on, on, on the air called uh, Box of Wives. Check it out. It's on bossup.com. We got the first nine episodes on it. Uh, we got a, uh, we we coming out right now this uh, July on TV One. So we'll be out on TV One. We got that. Uh, we got a, a series, uh, a television series that we're doing right now called The Floss. 
we shooting that right now, and that's gonna be crazy. Um, I got a, a web series that I'm on right now called The Foster Sin. Um, that's going really crazy. You guys check that out. My character name is Bones on that. And um, we're just moving around. Um, I was invited to the Oscars, and and I, and I received a Lifetime Achievement oh, yeah. Award All right. given by the Oscars. Yeah. So that That's was amazing, a, bro. That Congrats. was a beautiful thing. You know what? And I'm, and I'm, and I'm glad to um, be able to speak on that because that's my first time speaking on it. And a lot, and a lot of people kind of misconstrued what had what had happened on that situation. People say, "Oh, how did he get an Oscar? Like an Oscar? You don't get no Oscar. That's Sam Judy. He get a boxer." So no, I I got a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Oscars on all of my doings and everything that I've done now, making my new transition into the film world. So mm-hmm. it was like my welcome into the film world. That's awesome, bro. That's what's yep. up. That's, That's amazing. Dope. But yeah, on Law & Order, I think Larry could play a nice rape victim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can see, I can see yeah, Ice Kurt, coming. Kurt, I, you could play a good criminal on Law & Order. <laughs> I, can see hey. ice, I can see Ice coming to right now. Yo! The motherfuckers know the motherfucking Larry at? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know Larry, little motherfucker. He right take, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he can't oh, be doing that. <laughs> right, hey, hey. Oh man. Well, Zab, thank you very much for joining us this week here on you Boxing Insider. Sure, sure. I can't Radio. wait to get back, man. Boxing Insiders. They got the inside swaggle, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Follow Zab Judah on Instagram at um, Zab Judah. At Zab Judah. Follow our friend Jose Guzman at JLG Boxing. Follow our boy Curtis Jones at Just, Just Curtis. Curtis. <laughs> and of course, follow our friend Henry at De Leon Boxing. For all of us here at BoxingInsider.com. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm on Twitter too. Twitter. Super Judah on Twitter. Zap DL Judah on Facebook. You see, I got like Matt Ellis. Like, you know, I'm really from Brooklyn, right? Everything yeah. had a different name. That's a fact. <laughs> Yo, Curtis, Curtis, tell your wife you love her. You know, you got to tell her that. Yeah, Curtis. I love you, Nene. That's right. You know what? That get him in the house every night. That's the keys. Yeah, well, he ain't got no keys. He's like, I don't need no keys. Watch this. Baby, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the get in house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let us, everybody, Larry. Tell him. Tell him, Larry. You're, you're told. <laughs> I, I will be there. <laughs> anyway, we will see you guys next week here on BoxingInsider.com Radio. You.